graphs and networks, weighted graphs, and shorted, shortest graph problems, shortest path problems. Um, a weighted graph is a graph with a number associated with each edge. Sometimes it's a distance, sometimes it's a cost, but those numbers are always called weights. Now, it's a weight, not in terms of a physical weight, like in kilograms sort of thing, but a weight in terms of there is a certain value that goes with this edge. So in this example here, the weight is the distance in kilometers between towns. Now I keep talking about graphs and networks, and I'm not actually sure that I've ever said the word network except in the title. That's because a network is a particular sort of graph, which is a weighted graph showing a real life problem. Or situation. So that's why we keep on talking about graphs and networks. A network is a specific type of graph. Now, often we want to minimize the path that we take in terms of its weight. So here, find the shortest path between town A and town E. Um, and you can just do it for a really small graph. You can just do it by looking. But once you've got more than a couple of options, it actually gets quite tricky. And there's a really, really nasty method of solving it, which I won't teach you yet because Mr. Allen taught me a really nice way of solving it. And your method is this. You start at town A and work out where your options are from that. And we're about to make um, a little tree diagram basically. I could go to B, C, or F. And the weights of those 7, C was 9, F was 14. If I went to town B, after that, I could go to town C or town D. So remember, like making the tree diagrams way back in year nine, we could go to town C or town D. Town C would be 10, town D would be 15. So you can see so far, I can add up along the decision path. If I went from A to B to C, so far that would be seven kilometers. And we're gonna keep doing that from town C. Now it sort of looks like I've only got two choices because we went A, C, okay, F or D, but don't forget you could go back to town B. It doesn't make any sense to do so because it's 25 Ks around there. It's only 11 around there, but you could do it. Don't forget, sometimes going back might be a good option. So keep these in there. B, notice how I tried to leave a lot of space and it still gets kind of crowded. B, D, or F. So from C to B was 10, C to D was 11, C to F was two. Town F, we can go straight to town E. There's absolutely, okay, fine. We could go to town C. We'll put it in there. And that's F to E is nine. F to C is two. Now what that's given us is we've already got one route that gets to E. Add that up. 14 plus nine, 23. 
Now, automatically, that means that any path that's over 23, we can rule out because this is, it's got us to E in 23. We're looking for anything that's better than that. So, start tracking along and work out, okay, how can I get to E? From town F, straight to town E, that's nine. Great, I've got another option that gets me to E, that's 20. So all of a sudden we've got a new low aim of 20, which means I don't even need to bother checking A, B, D because that's already at 22. So I'm just going to cross that one off so I don't need to check it. A, C, D, again, that's already at 20. We might as well just pop it in because from D we could go straight to E at 6. So here's another one that gets to E, but it's taking 26 to do it. We're already at 19 to get to town B, and there's an absolute minimum of 21 after that. So we can rule out that. I've got up to 17 to town C, and the absolute minimum that way is an extra 11. So that's a no. From town C, the absolute minimum is an extra 11. That's a no. So we have our shortest path. And you'd give your path A, C, F, E and its length at 20 kilometers. If they asked you to prove that it was the shortest path, then you would have to work out each of these down to E and show that it was the shortest path.